Vacation Bible School. Raise your hand if you made a sand castle. If you didn't, you still can. Grab some Legos or some boxes or anything you can find around the house. Build a sand castle, take a picture and send it to us because we really want to see it. Now yesterday our theme was swallowed whole and Jonah was swallowed by a big fish. Can you make a fish face? Let me see you try. Good job. All right, well today's theme is turn around. Can everybody do a little turn? Great, now sit down and let's dive into our day today. I lay my life down at your feet and you're the only one I need. I turn to you and you are always there. Troubled times, it's you I see. I put you first, that's all I need. I humble all I am and all to you. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that. You were always, always there And every how and everywhere Your grace abounds so deeply within me You will never, ever change Yesterday, today the same Forever till forever meets no end You are the way, the truth, and the life. I live by faith and not by sight for you. Living all for you. You are the way, the truth, and the life. I live by faith and not by sight for you. Welcome back to Under the Sea Special Report. I am, as always, Seymour Finnegan, bringing you live action scenes as we are trying to track Jonah. We have aborted the boat that uh, he apparently was on, the avoider, and currently sitting at the, the hull of the ship. Uh, I've been told by the first mate that he is actually not on the ship anymore. <laughs> That's right, a storm came and uh, they threw him off the ship. So I am. Trying to figure out what to do next. I don't know when I'm gonna get home. I miss my mother. And uh wait, hold on. What? What Maureen, what do you want? What? No. No, absolutely not. No way. I'm not going in the water. No, indeed not. I don't care if he was swallowed by a fish. I am not going in. I don't even know how to swim. Holy doggy paddle. Oh please. Well, Looks like we'll be going into the water after Jonah. Stay tuned. Hey kids, welcome back to our lesson time. We're spending time working through the story of Jonah together. And you know how we always begin with a game. And this one's called Face Booty or awesome. Yes, it has the word booty in the title. You have to get past that. But we're going to we're going to see a quick video clip from somebody doing something and you have to guess, are they going to get hit in the face? 
Are they going to land on their booty or are they about to do something awesome? So you have to figure out what's going to happen next. Let's go ahead and check out our first video clip. All right, face booty or awesome. Go ahead and shout out now. What do you think is going to happen? Let's check it out. Ooh, that is a face shot. Nunchucks are uh, not to be taken lightly. All right, next one. All right, is this dude going to get hit in the face, land on his booty, or unpredictably do something awesome? What do, you, what do you think? Go ahead and tell us. Let's see. Oh, that is a face shot. When I first saw that, I thought he was going to land on his butt for sure, but that didn't happen. All right, next one. What do you think is going to happen there? Shout face, booty, or awesome from home. Let's see. A little flip and on the booty. Ouch. Does not look good. By the way, kids, do not try any of these things at home, especially not during the week of VBS. We want you to finish out the week strong. All right, next one. What do you think is happening here? Face, booty, or something awesome? And what is the elephant going to do? I don't know. Let's see. That was awesome. Also something you shouldn't try at home with your personal elephant. All right, next one. Hmm. Okay, face booty or awesome, you tell us. Let's see. That was awesome. All right, we have a couple more. Face booty or awesome, let's see. Not much to go on there. You saw the setup. Got a little flip. There was a bar in the scene. What do you think is going to take place? Uh, do we dare look or should we look away? Well, let's see. Ooh, a uh, booty hit there. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we got one more. Good old game of racquetball. Where is that ball going? Where are their body parts going? Face, booty, or awesome? Are we about to see something amazing? <laughs> I expected the ball to hit him in the face. I did not expect his face to hit the wall. Um, that's enough of those uh, gruesome scenes. This has been face, booty, or awesome. Right, some of that wasn't too pretty, and we've seen Jonah in a not very pretty situation. This poor dude, he's essentially fallen on his face. He has been kicked in the pants. He's been swallowed by a whale. And we're going to try to find out what happened to him next. Is it going to be awesome? Well, we saw that Jonah was in a dangerous place, but he was rescued by this weird means of God appointing a whale to swallow him whole. And we've been learning about how we're in a dangerous place because of our sin, our sin that causes us to, to run from the love of God, run to other things that we think are going to be okay and away from his presence. But God chases us down in his mercy. And God's mercy has come to Jonah. And just as Jesus was, he died on the cross and he was buried in the grave for three days. And on the third day, he rose again. Jonah found himself in a watery grave and he is buried in the belly of a fish. But then on the third day, the fish spits him out onto dry land. What's going to take place now? 
Our theme of the day is turning around. And we're going to see different people in this story are turning. And the first one is Jonah. Jonah turns. In chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. I love this about God. Right? He, he comes to him another time. He gives him his mercy, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Jonah changes directions. Jo Jonah decides to let God take over control. He says, God, your boss, our, our theme verse for the week is salvation belongs to the Lord. And what we're going to see in both Jonah and in the people of Nineveh is turning around, turning away from our sin and the things that we're chasing after and turning to what God wants. And, and the word the Bible uses for that first one, turning away from our sin, is called repentance. And the Bible describes turning toward God as faith. And Jonah does that here. He turns toward God's call on his life. And he brings the message to Nineveh. And that's the second uh, people group that we see turning here is that Nineveh turns. Look at verse 4. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey. And he called out, yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. They believed God. They turned toward God in faith. They believed what he said. But in order to do that, notice what they also did. They turned from their ways. They turned away from their sin. And that's why they're putting on sackcloth. Sackcloth is kind of like really itchy clothing. <laughs> but people would wear it in the Bible to show that they were sad. Sometimes they would wear it when they were grieving because somebody had died. But here they're grieving. They're sad because of their sin. And that's what repentance looks like. It looks like being sorry. Sorry not only that we have hurt other people, but that we have ultimately sinned against God. God wants us to see our sin for what it is and to turn away from it, and to turn toward what God has done to fix it. And notice, Nineveh, Nineveh knows they can do that here. They, they look to God. They, they, they say, perhaps God will turn, right? That, that's the third person, and the most important one to see in every story of Scripture is God. God turns in this story. Look at what they say in verse 9. Who knows? God may turn and relent and turn from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. He turned from his judgment. And, and, and what I love about God is he's the, the, the first one to come to us, right? We don't figure out, maybe I can make God an offer and maybe I can prove to him how good I am and how my sin's not really that bad. Maybe I can swim across the ocean. That's not how this story works. We need to realize that in ourselves, we have no hope. We can never be good enough. We can never do enough righteous things. We can never make our way to heaven on our own. We need to realize we have sinned. But we also need to embrace, we need to turn in faith to what God has done in his son, Jesus. That unusual way that God has saved us by placing all the punishment on him, on having him enter into death for us. God turns from his punishment that we deserve so that when he looks at us, what he sees is not all the wrong things that we have done, all of the ways that we have been selfish and been hateful toward other people and not put him first. What he sees 
is the perfect life and the death of his perfect son, and he doesn't judge us. Instead, he rewards us. He gives us his love and his mercy for all the days of our lives. David says that in in the Psalms, that, that God's goodness and mercy have followed after him all the days of our, all the days of his life, and that could be true of us as well. God chases us down. He seeks us out. And when we turn from our sin and we turn to him in faith and we trust him, God says, I'm going to bless you and chase you down with my love every day of your life. That's how good God is. But we need to turn. We need to turn away from the things that we think we really need that God does not approve of, that don't help us love God better that God is against. We need to turn from thinking that we can on our own save ourselves or earn our way into a good relationship with God that we could swim across the ocean to reach him. Right? We, we turn not just from the bad things, we turn away from the good things that we're doing thinking that we deserve God's love. We turn away from anything that thinks that salvation is found in us. And we realize, like Jonah had to realize, Salvation belongs to the Lord. And we say, God, you have permission to be in charge. You have permission to tell me what to do, where to go, what I should turn away from and what I should turn toward. We acknowledge, God, that you are first. It's repentance and it's faith. Let me just pray for us as we consider this together. God, thank you for your mercy that comes to us again and again. Would we trust you? Will we turn from our sin? Will we turn from thinking that we're good, that we're okay in ourselves? Will we turn from anything that we have allowed to take your place on our hearts? Will we look to Jesus in faith, the perfect Savior who died and rose again for us? And when we turn to him, will we realize that you have turned from the judgment that we deserve and show us mercy every day of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, my bullion barnacles, and welcome to day four of CHOP. The show where two unsuspecting sea biscuits will try their best to recreate a spectacular dessert that we have created for them. Once again, I'm your host, Sprinkle Yum Yum. And yesterday, we saw Chef Teo explode while Chef Jordan Fish and Paul Hemus floated away with the grand prize. Let's greet our wonderful judges who certainly take the cake. Chef Victor Coco Meringue and his twin brother, Nictor Butterbee Meringue. Competing today, we have Chef Patty Cake Treese and Chef Gnarly Charlie. Their challenge is to try and make ocean grams. Stay tuned for who will be cheered and who will be Okay, here we are. We've got Chef Patty Cake Treese over here on my right and Chef Gnarly Charlie on my All left. Right. Chefs, get ready. I'm going to count down, and when I say chomped, you go. All right, nice. Okay, three, two, one, chomp! Oh, what's this? Fun fact about Charlie, has a pet kookaburra. Yeah. I happen to know that Patrice is a very good uh, maker of uh, salad dressing. Okay. Five, Wait, four, three, two, two uh, one. one. Put the bag down. Hands up. You know Hands what up. that means. Check their pockets. <laughs> Chef Victor and Chef Nictor, you have got quite a challenge here choosing a winner between these two master, uh-huh. master something or yeah. another uh-huh. pieces. Yes. Uh huh. Uh-huh. So you two go ahead, talk, decide among yourselves who's the winner, and then we'll make the announcement. 
I like both of these. Um, I can see the creativity uh, that, and the time that was really put into interpret what our oh, nice. main piece was. Um, and looking at them, I like, again, I like, I like the colors. I like the fish. You know, this one seems like the, the fish are feeding. This one, maybe fish vomited. I don't know. Mm. But I also I admired the amount of crack. passion that went into Why creating this one. Yeah. What do you think, Vic? I would first off like to uh -huh. say that sure. it's, a, it's an honor to be here and be one of the judges here on Chomped. Oh, I, sure. And I'd like to give a shout out to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, I, uh, well, a great the, love. The, the name above all names. It's just, but this, this, Hallelujah. this is a hot mess mm. right here. It's loose. Uh, from, from, from Charlie. Mm. Um, but I gotta tell you, I love, I love the, you know, this is like a, this is like an abstract piece of art. Yes. I simply love it. I think it's a one, two, three. Fabershum! It's a Fabershum. I love it. I, I like Patrice's. A little too much blue for me. Okay. Well, so I think. A little too much blue. I think that we are saying the same thing here. On the count of three. One, one two, two, three. three. Fabershum! Charlie! <laughs> Chef Patty Cake Trees, I am so sorry to say that you have been. Taunt! <laughs> no whining and no complaining. Oh, good job! Chomp! Tell us what it means to you to be the Chomp Champion. Oh, I'd just like to thank Jesus Christ for getting me here. This is like those big waves over in Australia and Sydney, mate. <laughs> Yes, it is. She's so demonstrative. Thank oh, ten. Yeah. Let's crown you. Oh, 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 this is such I a big head. I in Australia. I have a big head. I apologize. It's okay. She's the big winner. She's the Woo! people's champion. The memory verse is, For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Romans 10, dot, dot, 10. And what does that mean? If you say Jesus died for your sins and truly believe that, you will be counted right with God. That's awesome. The crown of thorn starfish is one of the largest starfish in the world. Adult starfish can range in size from 25 to 35 centimeters, and some can be as large as 80 centimeters, having up to 23 arms. These starfish get the name from the thorn-like spines that cover its entire body, resembling Jesus' crown of thorns. The spines alone make this starfish look scary, but their spines are also venomous. Wounds are very painful and can be serious. The crown of thorn starfish also has a hefty appetite, and since they feed on coral reefs, they can cause major damage to the reefs if not monitored. I would definitely turn away if I saw one of these creatures coming. Wouldn't you? You guys back again? Y'all really must be having a whale of a time. Speaking of whales, I wonder where Joan is today. Want to help me find him? Black, he has been spit out onto dry land. God tells him again to go to Nineveh. Does he go this time? Yep. And what's going on in Nineveh? Well, I think we might just have a question that might help us see what's happening in Nineveh. My name is Ezra, and I want to know what it means to believe and trust in God. Ezra, great question. Let's see if I can help you guys understand what believing and trusting in God looks like. So God wants us to be his children and live close to him. Now this cup, it represents God. So in this example, being in the cup would be very close to God. However, Sin and fear, it keeps us from being with him. And the tissue is going to represent sin and fear. Now, these nickels here, they're going to represent us. So here is me, 
and here is Ezra, and here is you. And we were separated from God. God wants us to trust him. So the Holy Spirit helps us to know and trust God. This water is going to represent the Holy Spirit. And trusting in God means believing in him and receiving his gift of life. So in John 3.16, we are told that God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, and whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. When we listen to the Holy Spirit and we ask for forgiveness in our hearts because of what Jesus did on the cross, God will forgive us and we can live forever with him. Sometimes this happens when we're young, sometimes when we're older, but if we put our trust in God and we listen to the Holy Spirit, it will happen. So drop in next time for some time under the shade. You call us to go, 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 but sin says no, 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 even as we run, run, run. Grace will overcome When you draw near The darkness disappears You send the sun It was your grace Grace, grace It was always your grace Whether a fish in the sea Or a man on a tree When I call your name You are always the same Whether I sin or obey, there's always your grace. You call us to go, 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 so the world may know, know, know what you've done, done, done. Our sin's been overcome. When you draw near, the darkness disappears. You sent your son. As always your grace Whether a fish in the sea Or a man on a tree When I call your name You are always the same Whether I run or I stay If I sin or obey There's always your grace When you draw near darkness disappears you sent your son it was your grace 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 it was always your grace whether a fish in the sea or a man on a tree when i call your name you are always the same whether i run or i stay if i sin or There's always your way. Hey, boys and girls, and welcome to this episode of Craftiest Catch. I'm your host, Fisherman Ron, and today I have a treat for you. My good buddy, Mr. Kurt, reminded me of something. Scientific evidence has shown that the humble storm drain is actually host to a large and vast amount of marine and aquatic life. Uh, Things like giant lizard monsters and um, uh, toxic and mutated uh, piranhas, all sorts of marine life can actually be found in the local storm drain. And let's face it, if you've lived in New Orleans for any length of time, you know that there's no telling what... Oh, did you hear that? That's my good buddy Mastaza. He's a lionfish, and I I think he's showing me that there's... Whoa, look at this guy. He's a orca, also known as a killer whale. Now, not to be confused with his distant relative, the great white shark. Well, listen, hope you guys had a good day at VBS today, and like I always say, if I don't see you soon, I'll catch you later.